What is going on world? What's up YouTube? It's Zero here. Today I'm bringing you guys a brand new episode of The 8 Below Show. Welcome everyone to 8 Below. Thanks for being here guys to the best entertainment related show here on YouTube. And I'm super excited about our episode here today. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. So let's get into it. Today, guys, we have a pretty special episode of the show. I'm really excited about it, guys. We're going to be talking in this episode primarily about Call of Duty, uh, which, of course, guys, is one of the big three, one of the uh, the big three best games ever made, in my personal opinion. And uh, I'm very excited to talk about it from Black Ops Cold War to the future of the Call of Duty franchise. I'm joined today, though, guys, uh, by a fellow content creator. His name is Golden, guys. I'm going to certainly introduce him uh, here uh, onto the show here in a moment. He'll tell you a little bit about himself before we officially get into the show. But I wanted to, like I said, kind of just give you guys an idea of what we're going to be doing here on this episode of the show. So we'll be talking about Black Ops Cold War and kind of giving our thoughts on it, the good, the bad, and the things that need to be changed moving forward. And then, of course, we're also going to be talking about some Call of Duty things in the world of a wish list for the future of COD. And then we will wrap up the show with Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and also Call of Duty Go. So very excited about it, guys. Uh, a lot to talk about on the show, but I'm going to bring on Golden. What's up, man? Uh, nothing much. Thanks for having me. So yeah, I'm very excited for this. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Uh, I, I'm glad that you're coming on to the show. He, uh, Golden reached out to me, guys, and wanted to uh, do a collaboration um, on the YouTube channel. And so uh, definitely after he reached out, we talked and uh, agreed, of course, to for him to come on to my channel. And I'll also be going on to his channel as well. So Golden, tell uh, everyone on the channel, just before we get into the show, uh, kind of your your story here as far as from a, you know, just from v gaming in general and, um, you know, kind of how you fit into, I guess, this entire, you know, ecosystem of, of gaming. How did you kind of get, you know, introduced to gaming and uh, how did you get to where you are right now? Okay, so I got introduced to gaming probably when I was like three or four. The first game I remember playing was, I think, Call of Duty Black Ops, ironically. It was Zombies uh, with one of my friends. And uh, ever since then, I've just been playing mainly COD, but a lot of other games. Uh, I think I've owned every single COD from the last couple of generations. So that's all very interesting for me. And obviously, I've just been uh, recording videos recently. I've actually been doing this for like, four years but i had a different channel at the time i recently uh, made a new one which is the one that you'll find in the video that i'm uploading with you there so yeah that's kind of where i stand right now just have been playing games for pretty much all my life yeah that's great dude um that's awesome i uh you know i think it, it's great to kind of see where uh others obviously have come from in the in the gaming community and and uh you know even up and coming content creators, streamers, and, and, and uh, people within that, within that, you know, sphere and such. And I, so I'm very excited, um, like I said, to have you onto the channel, but with that guys, um, to start our very first segment of the show, topic number one is about Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. So guys, look, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, this is a, a, a game that, uh, you know, came out very recently and I uh, wanted to give our thoughts on it. I would have, you know, I, I kind of wanted to talk about it right when the game came out, but at the same time, I felt that having a little bit of some time to kind of see what we really thought of the game was very important, um, you know, and give it a couple of days. Because at first, you're going to be really excited. Generally speaking, you know, those of us who are in the Call of Duty community, you get your copy and you're really excited. You, you know, put the disc in or you download onto your Xbox or PlayStation and you start playing the game. And at first, it's fresh, it's new, and you really enjoy it for what it is. As the days go on, you'll start kind of nitpicking on things that are good, things that are bad. And so that's exactly what we're going to do here with Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Now guys, I'm not we're not going to give like an official review or anything of uh, of that nature, but we are going to talk about some good things, some bad things and uh you know, kind of what we can hope to see and maybe future updates and things of that nature. So, I'll start with 
uh, as far as the campaign. So that's kind of the main thing for me when I first play a, a Call of Duty title, I will always play the campaign first. And there's a number of reasons for that. Number one is I want to, you know, know about the story. I want to know everything about the game and, and the title that I'm about to play. Um, and so playing it from the campaign perspective, you can really kind of get some context on, on where you are as far as time period, the weapons you're going to be using. The number two thing for me, though, is, is learning those weapons, learning those, um, you know, kind of uh, kind of get a feel for each of of the different types of movement to, to weapons. And, and I think it's really important to do that in that setting in the campaign. So that's where I really start. So obviously, guys, that's kind of, you know, my background with the campaign is I always play it first. Black Ops Cold War. Although I felt that it had a very interesting campaign, I, I did uh, enjoy it overall. Um, I didn't like it. It felt very short to me, uh, which was one negative thing. So I guess this could kind of be characterized as somewhat bad, even though I feel that the campaign, uh, obviously, call it, it's a Call of Duty campaign through and through. Now, there were some pu little puzzles. They added some differences to, to this campaign, Um but I got to say that the one thing that I didn't like a lot was it just felt very short to me. It felt shorter than other Call of Duties. And generally speaking, it takes about six hours to beat a Call of Duty campaign. And it's pretty much, you know, a lot of those things haven't changed over the years. This one just felt a lot, uh, a lot shorter to me, at least. It felt like not as much was put into this campaign as other campaigns in the past. Um... But overall, uh, I, I like, they definitely tried some different, you know, things, which I'm not going to have any spoilers or anything like that. They tried different things. I thought that some things landed uh, in the campaign, but uh, other things did not so much. And I definitely, I got to give a big, uh, big shout out to Activision as well as Treyarch, Raven, and Sledgehammer for taking a leap of faith in certain areas of this campaign. I, I actually was pretty surprised at certain things. But overall, guys, uh, I got to say, it's a Call of Duty campaign through and through, but um, I just felt that it was very short. Uh, Golden, uh, I know you've gotten a chance to play uh, this game as a whole. What were your thoughts? Did you get a chance to play the campaign? I uh, played through the entire campaign. I found it very interesting. I liked how there were two split endings. Obviously, I'm not going to spoil them. But the game, uh, the choices you make throughout, it does actually have an effect on the ending, which I found very interesting because not a lot of games have that. And it reminds me of BO2, where their choices in that game actually had an effect to some extent, at least. So that was something I found very interesting, and that's something I found very good. Uh, but something I found bad was mainly in multiplayer, which was the map variety and weapon variety. So, uh, not a weapon variety, my bad. Game mode variety. So, I found the lack of maps, which I think there were only like eight or nine at launch, very sad. I understand COVID was like a major thing. It was rampaging, it still is to some extent. So, obviously, they're not going to be able to do as much with it. But I found it still a little bit disappointing. And the lack of game modes also was a little bit disappointing with only, I believe, 10. Right. Yeah, and, and I mean, I guess with, with the multiplayer side of it, Overall, I, I got to say that I think I agree with you on, you know, the, some of the variety, I know like the maps and such, they definitely, they had some pretty, they definitely have some unique maps in the multiplayer, but, um, I, I agree. I feel like there just wasn't a lot of content at launch and that was a little bit, uh, unfortunate to me as well. Uh, as I said, you know, I felt like the campaign was already it felt kind of very short. Now, maybe I just enjoyed the campaign that much. It just felt like I was flying through it or something, but it felt short. So it felt like there wasn't quite as much there. And I agree with you about having the split endings. I really enjoyed that as well. Um, but I, I didn't like how, how short it was. And it feels like, uh, you know, so, even some of these other modes like multiplayer felt a little bit, not bare bones, but you could say that it definitely was on the weaker side when it came to the maps. Now, as far as zombies go, I I'm not a huge zombies fan, guys. I, I like zombies for what it is. Um, I have talked multiple times on the YouTube channel about 
Uh, zombies, I've always been a firm believer that there should have been multiple game, game modes in zombies, that being like a way to uh, beat zombies, a way to um, save your progress as you're going through the waves and such. So zombies has never been really my thing. I always liked extinction more than zombies. Uh, but uh, I, I, from looking at you know, what they've kind of done here with zombies. And I've seen some people go very, very far in zombies up to this point. Um, I think I saw FaZe Blaziken made it up to like level 104 or something, which is, which is really impressive. Uh, overall, I mean, I think the, the, the way that the, from a graphical standpoint, all, you know, how, um, kind of flashy the zombies are just to, as far as like, you know, from a graphical standpoint to the, to the maps you know, and all of that, it's pretty, uh, impressive to say the least. Golden, what did you think? You probably play zombies quite a bit more than me. What did you think about zombies? I found it very impressive. Honestly, I found it as one of the better launch experiences of uh, zombies in a whole so i personally really enjoyed how they revisited noct in a new way they made noct the smallest part of the map when uh, you exit the bunker the entire map opens up there's plenty of running room and of course you can go into the underground area and pack a punch there and there's just so much to do and i found that really interesting i also liked how uh what's it called the map was, like, it always felt different now. Because I felt like BO3 and BO4, they became much more uh, hardcore player-based, where it was only for people who wanted to go for Easter eggs or wanted to, like, unfold the storyline. And this one, it's literally just for fun, and it's just for casual players, and I love that. And I also love to see the return of a mode called Dead Ops Arcade, which was in BO1, BO3, and now Black Ops Cold War, which is a very fun mode, albeit sometimes disappointing if you're not playing with the right people. And yeah, so that's kind of my views on it. It was a very fun mode, and I do think that the DLCs are going to make it better. Because of free DLC, now the entire player base gets to feel it too. So that's fun. Right. Yeah, free DLC is great. I, I want to get your thoughts, though. I, I What are your thoughts on... You know, as I've stated, you know, on on my YouTube channel multiple times, that I I don't like the concept that you can't beat zombies. That it's like this never ending thing, and that's why I felt like so many other there's other Call of Duty players and just casual gamers that that start playing zombies, and it gets very um, repetitive um, because you're let's say you get up to what let's say you're putting a lot of time into it and over and over again, you'll die at, you know, whatever wave it is. And then you start all over. I understand that that's the, that that's the whole point of zombies, but do you think that they need to elaborate on new game modes, a way in which that you can actually beat zombies or a way that you can save your progress? What are your thoughts on that? Okay, so I don't know if you played BO3's uh, Nightmare Mode or whatever it was called, but that was a kind of like a story-based zombies mode in where, granted, it wasn't wave-based or round-based, but you could fight the Undead Horde while going through a BO3-like story, which I found interesting. Sadly, they never revisited it in BO4 or Black Ops Cold War. That would be something that I would like to see a return to. Um, and... Obviously, I think that would be smart to make you to have you save your progress. Like it could be optional, and if you wanted to go for it, that could be a separate mode. But I kind of like just you get as high as you can, and then you just fall right back down to the bottom once you fail. That's something that I find interesting, uh, and a bunch of the zombies community finds interesting, just because it makes you want to keep on replaying and keep on going for higher rounds. Where if you can just save and go infinitely, it becomes less uh, fun and less replayable. Yeah. No, I mean, I see where you're coming from. Definitely. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just, um, you know, I know that there's others out there that kind of didn't like how, uh, you know, how sometimes how repetitive it would get. And I know that they've added more to it, the, you know, ranking up systems and they've done a lot of different things to add more to the experience. Um, I just wanted to kind of get your thoughts on that, but yeah, I look guys overall, um, I'm going to kind of give a grade and look, I, at the end of the day, um, a lot of this 
is subject to, 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 to change um, as time goes because um, right now I, I'm a huge Call of Duty fan. And so I, you know, I look at Call of Duty as the standard uh, from a, a first person shooter perspective. So I'm going to be, you know, treating it as such, even though I'm, I, I absolutely love Call of Duty, one of my favorite games of all time. I still, at this point in time, guys, um, I'm going to give it uh, from a campaign, uh, which I thought was, you know, I, I liked some of the where they were kind of going with certain, um, you know, certain elements of the campaign. I, I did enjoy that. I didn't like how short it was, um, but I, I do like that Activision and, and Sledgehammer, and of course, Treyarch, kind of ch- tried some different things. I really appreciate that. The multiplayer, I'm assuming it's going to get stronger over time. They're going to continue to ramp up from, a, you know, a, from maps to, you know, adding more content along the way. That also goes to, you know, Warzone with Infinity Ward, uh, you know, with Warzone and the zombies. Um... I got to say, it's one of the best looking zombies experiences I've ever seen. I do kind of wish that they would have added some other game modes. So at this point in time, guys, um, I like I'm hesitant to give it like a obviously not a perfect grade because there's definitely things, you know, that I think that needed uh, need refined and, and, and so on and so forth. But I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10 right here, right now. Uh, over time, maybe it'll go up to an eight. Maybe it could even get up to a nine as the experience kind of gets refined. Um, but look guys, every call of duty, none of them are perfect in my eyes. I I believe black ops two was the greatest call of duty ever made, but I, you know, you can never really give a perfect grade to it because uh, there's always going to be flaws. I loved black ops four, uh, but black ops four didn't have a campaign, which kind of hurt it. And so there's always going to be things that need to be changed. There's going to be things that need to stay. Um, so on and so forth. So 7.5 out of 10, I think is where I'm at right now with Black Ops Cold War. I think we're in for a good year for Call of Duty as long as they continue to update. I think we're in good hands with Treyarch. And from the esports perspective, I think that the CDL uh, is going to be in a pretty good spot as well because it really sounds like they're going to be supporting the CDL scene as well. Golden, what would be your grade so far for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War? At the moment... With multiplayer, I believe laying down the game to some extent. I'm around yours. I'm at about an eight because I really enjoyed the zombies experience and the campaign, albeit it was a little short. And a good chunk of the multiplayer maps and mainly our model was a lot of fun. So an eight is where I stand. Could be higher, could be lower, depending on what they do with the game in the future. Okay. And with that being said, guys, uh, we definitely want to hear from you. Uh, you, You're hearing two uh, guys talk about our thoughts on Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment section down below. And for more Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. One thing that I love to talk about on the YouTube channel, guys, is not only just Call of Duty in general, but the future of Call of Duty and where this series could be going, you know, uh, down the line. And what I want to talk about in this segment of the show is a wish list, something that uh, I, as well as Golden, would like to see. And obviously, our lists are going to probably be a little bit different. There might be similarities. But we're going to go and have a a number of things that we want to see um, added to Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, added potentially maybe to Warzone, or added to future Call of Duties down the road. So let's get into it. So for me, guys, at number one, um, I want to see the return of the intervention, my favorite weapon in Call of Duty. Uh, the intervention, guys, the sniper rifle, um, is really where I got my. Uh, it's it's a weapon that I use the most in Modern Warfare 2. I, I mean, it's pretty much what started everything for me. Um, a lot of people started in COD 4. I played COD 4 from a you know played the campaign. Didn't really touch the multiplayer until later on. But MW2 is where I really started playing the multiplayer experience. And when I started, uh, my brother got me into sniping and then trick shotting eventually. But, uh, so when it came to sniping, the intervention, obviously the Barrett and, you know, some of these other weapons were, were okay, but the intervention was something about the intervention. Well, um, we really haven't had all these Call of Duties later, 
we've had people wanting the intervention for so long. It was added to, uh, you know, it was like COD online or something, which uh, not everyone had access to. And people really wanted to see it because that was like a, a hybrid Call of Duty that was very popular over in China. And people really wanted to see the intervention return. But for some reason, Activision and just the, the developers, I don't know if it's Activision, I don't know if it's developers, but they just never added the intervention, um, you know, to any of these titles. And even as, as a weapon that you could, you know, unlock at some point down the road. And so what I'd like to see is we're not going to probably see it with Black Ops Cold War because obviously the intervention came with Modern Warfare 2, which was made by Infinity Ward. But could we see it return in its true form uh, potentially in Call of Duty 2021. So that's number one for me, guys. I'd love to see the intervention return in a major way. Uh, Golden, what would be your number one thing you'd like to see in Call of Duty? Okay, so my number one is a branching storyline in the campaign, something that, that Black Ops 2 and Black Ops Cold War had done. Uh, it's something that I would like to see more of in Call of Duty, where all your choices throughout the game have an effect whether you kill a certain uh, character in it or you don't. I would love to see that actually have a pivotal role in the ending of a COD. So let's say it was MW, right? And you could either spare... Did you finish MW's campaign? Actually, I want to ask you. Yeah, yeah. Your right. Call of Duty Modern Warfare? Yeah, the new... 2019. Yes. Yes, I did. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. So, obviously, at the end, uh, you kill, like, that Russian dude. And I wanted to see another story where like you could have spared his life and then it would have led to an alternate ending potentially like a russian uh, coup in the government or something along those lines i think that would have been very interesting and i kind of would like to see that so i would definitely put uh, multiple endings as my number one okay yeah that's uh, that's definitely something that i would i would certainly be interested in seeing you know maybe obviously they kind of teased it here with black ops cold war we could certainly maybe see that in the future. Uh, number two for me, guys, is a map. I want to see Standoff return. It's my favorite map ever in Call of Duty. Came out in Black Ops 2, which I believe, like I said earlier in the show, my favorite Call of Duty uh, ever made. I believe it was absolutely uh, incredible from campaign to multiplayer. The whole experience for me was absolutely awesome. And Standoff, guys, I just thought it was the perfect map for any type of play style, whether you're talking sniping, which is what we did a lot of, uh, trick shotting, which we did a lot of as well, from a competitive, uh, you know, map to pub stomping map to pretty much everything all around, standoff was perfect in my personal opinion. Now, um, obviously, there's other maps I'd love to see return as well, but Standoff would be the main one that I would like to see. I mean, you could say it could be revamped, remastered, something along the, along those lines. I'd love to see that return. Um, there's been talk that maybe it was going to return in Black Ops Cold War. Maybe it's going to return at some point or another, um, you know, in a, in a future Call of Duty. It's hard to say, uh, but it's definitely one that's been requested along with, of course, Raid, Slums. I know Slums came back, but, uh, you know, Raid. I mean, there's a number of maps out there, guys, that people want to see return of. For me, it's absolutely standoff. Uh, Golden, what's number two for you? The map hijacked from BO2. So uh, that map is iconic to many. Uh, there are so many internet posts about it every single day being like, oh, yeah, you should revamp this, bring it back. And I do think that they could fit it into Cold War. They can make a specialized map. It was just a basic yacht map, which was a three way, which was what's it called? A three lane map, which is a very normal uh, type. But it being on the water could actually do stuff now in Black Ops Cold War as they have swimming mechanics and you can actually go through the water and jump onto other ships which I would like to see, and that would be very interesting. Plus, that map was by far my favorite of probably any COD, maybe next to NW2's Rust, but obviously we already have that. So I would definitely be fun with it coming back. Yeah, yeah, Hijack's a great map, without a doubt. Um, for me, guys, at number three, uh, this is kind of transitioning from just a norm, you know, normal play styles and such of Call of Duty to the esports scene. Uh, for me, guys, one thing that you know, and this probably might be a little bit controversial because some people feel a certain way about this because the call because Call of Duty esports has 
been pretty much one way, that being controller players being able to, you know, obviously uh, dominate the scene. I would like to see the esports side or the CDL, the Call of Duty League, I want to see it transition from controller to PC. And the main reason for that, guys, is because look, uh, consoles obviously are, they're great. I absolutely, I, I play Xbox, I've got a PlayStation. Um, I, I have no problem with the, the, you know, playing on controller, but I do believe that you are going to draw a huge amount of other players that are foreign, whether you're talking from Europe to, to Korea, uh, that would play Call of Duty because they're, you know, obviously PC is the do is dominant over all the consoles and such. So I would love to see the esports side slowly transition, and we're getting the rumblings. We're hearing that people are going to be able to start playing on PC, but with the controller. And so there's a lot of talk that uh, they may be transitioning to PC. I think it would be best for the the CDL and the Call of Duty esports scene as a whole. Uh, we have a lot of, of great you know personalities in Call of Duty right now. Um, who we have the best personalities in any you know esport in the world, and it's not even close. But I think as these personalities in the CDL, as they're starting to age, the scumpies of the world, you know, Crim6, a number of these guys are, you know, going to be retiring. They're on the back end of their career. I, I think it's time to make that transition to PC. You're still going to have the personalities. And I, I think it's going to actually really make Call of Duty Esports global, not just a real, like, dominant in the North American region. Um, that's my number three. What is yours, Golden? Uh, my number three is that ma our maps that are not just three lanes. Obviously, that can be achieved now. Mainly in Cold War, we have seen it. Uh, mainly with the map Armada, where you can go through the water, um, swim underneath the boats, blow up other people. It's a very interesting concept that I would like to see expanded on, as I find three-lane maps very easy because people can just camp in one corner and unless you already have been killed by them like multiple times you're most likely just going to keep on getting uh, taken out by them and that could potentially lose you a match and the main thing is when it's not three lanes that normally is not as big of an issue so that's what i would like to see uh just because it hasn't really been seen since i believe advanced warfare or ghosts uh which had massive maps so yeah i'd love to see that yeah Take de yeah definitely um at number four for me, guys, uh, you know, this is another probably going to be controversial, but I kind of alluded to it a little bit earlier in the show. Uh, I want to see Extinction return. Extinction, guys, to me, was um, a very fun mode. I, and as I had kind of, you know, stated earlier, I loved the concept that you could beat it, but I, I think that they didn't really give it. Uh, that being Activision and Infinity War, they, they didn't really give it um, much of a chance, I guess you could say, outside of Ghosts. So I would really like to see Extinction return, um, whether it's in the, the next title by Infinity Ward or at some point or another uh, down the road. I thought it was a great rival to Zombies. I just don't think it was ever given you know, enough content in there, you know, after you beat it, you know, you might not play it again. And that's why I think multiple modes would have been great for something like extinction. So I'd love to see that return, like an extinction 2.0, something of that nature. And it's really expanded upon. It could be something really special. Uh, what would be number four for you, Golden? Uh, my number four is kind of similar to yours. However, it relates to zombies. I like seeing casual based maps because like I said earlier, uh, Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4 had veered away from that. And now, after uh, over two games, since BO2, we are making a return to casual-based maps, which is something that I enjoy. I never was a big fan of BO3 and BO4 because of those types of maps. Um, so I would like to be able to play it with my friends who don't just go for Easter eggs and have an amazing time on the game instead of having to like build Pack-A-Punch, do a bunch of steps to do this one very tiny thing that has a very minor role in the story. So yeah, that's something that I would like to see. Personally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I see where you're coming from. Um, I have one more. I don't know if you have another one golden, but I, I have one more and 
Uh, it kind of is along the same lines as, uh, you know, with Extinction and such. Um, and this, once again, could be somewhat controversial. Guys, I'd like to see, and we'll be talking later on uh, in the show about this, uh, I'd like to see a Call of Duty Ghost too. And look, uh, the main reason for that, and I say that because we were left on what could be the biggest cliffhanger of all time in Call of Duty with Call of Duty Ghost 1. And look, I, I get it. The multiplayer definitely was not... Um, you know, it was not a, a great multiplayer experience. Some people really enjoyed it. I didn't think that the multiplayer experience was great, but I think that there were certain elements of Ghost that I think there was something there. And so I think, guys, that uh, even though I love Modern Warfare, I love Black Ops, uh, and it seems like everything's kind of pointing to Activision just wants to move forward with those two franchises, or I guess you could say those two sub-series in the overarching franchise that is Call of Duty. It sounds like they're just going to go back and forth between Modern Warfare and Black Ops. Sure, those are the two that are the most popular. Uh, but for me personally, if we're talking about our wish list here, uh, I'm not saying that they have to make a ton of Call of Duty Ghost titles, but I would like to see a true continuation to see what happens in that story. Um, and I think that they could definitely, with what they know now, I think Infinity War could make something pretty cool uh, with Call of Duty Ghost too. So that would be my last. Do you have anything else, Golden? Yeah, so what I would like to see is actually uh, Call of Duty visit a time period that we haven't ever gone to. We've gone to the future and we've gone slightly into the past. What I would like to see is more of like a World War One style uh, COD. That would be very interesting to me as that is something that has never been explored outside of Battlefield, which I played Battlefield 1. It's a fun game, but obviously... I would like to see it uh, put, get put into COD. They could potentially even link it into the Black Ops storyline called like Call of Duty Black Ops 1914 or something like that. I would enjoy playing that a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's great. They've done so much. I'm, I'm sure that there is, um, you know, there's still a lot to, to be done in my personal opinion as well. But with that, guys, what do you all think? What yeah. would be your wish list from the standpoint of what are what are the things that you guys would want to see in a Call of Duty, uh, whether we're talking currently, like in Black Ops Cold War, or what would you want to see in a future Call of Duty? Let us know in the comment section down below. And for more Call of Duty content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. Call of Duty is a franchise just like, you know, pretty much any other major franchise out there, guys, that has had significant peaks and it's also had its valleys. And what I want to talk about, guys, now in this segment of the show is about Call of Duty and advanced warfare. And could we ever see, or will we ever see, an advanced warfare too? So let's talk about it. So, guys, I have been on record uh, on the show, on the YouTube channel. You guys can check out all of the, the Call of Duty content here. And what I want to talk about, uh, as I stated, you know, with Advanced Warfare, um, you know, to give some context, where, what I feel about Advanced Warfare, and, you know, so we could kind of predict and kind of talk about what the future could look like uh, with the potential of an Advanced Warfare 2. Um, if we go back to when we had Call of Duty Ghosts, and obviously everybody in the community wanted change. They wanted there to be change. And boy, did we get changed with Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Um, obviously, guys, when this game first was announced, uh, lots of people in the community, myself included, were very excited because it was different. It was going to be something different. And to me, at least in my mind, I thought to myself, yeah, this really isn't Call of Duty, but okay, that's fine. They're, they're, they're going to try this thing out. And sure, they, take the, they took some things from Titanfall and you know, they, they wanted to try something different. They gave it to us and everybody wanted something different. So we couldn't complain about that. The problem, uh, with advanced warfare wasn't to, in my opinion, with advanced warfare itself. It was what followed advanced warfare. I believe guys, and I've stated this a lot of times that we went into the dark ages of call of duty after advanced warfare. I believe that black ops, you know, when black ops three came out, and then Infinite Warfare 
we went into a time where we lost many people in the community and I believe it was the dark ages because Activision took this notion of change and they didn't green light just one game that were, you know, jetpacks. Uh, they did it with three games. And so after green lighting those three games, I don't think if they would have just made Advanced Warfare and then they went back to boots on the ground after that, just to kind of see, they kind of dip their toes in the water to see what it's all about. Um, I think that would have been fine. The problem though was with Advanced Warfare, uh, they didn't do that. And they had greenlit two other games outside of Advanced Warfare and that lost a huge portion of the community. Now, granted, uh, those games, Black Ops 3 and uh, Infinite Warfare were still the best selling games of their respective years. So where does that lead us now? Well, Advanced Warfare 2, guys, I think it, it could very well be catastrophic to Call of Duty as a whole if they were to go back in that direction uh, where you have jetpacks and such. Um, sure, you know, Call of Duty, like I said, it's had peaks and valleys, like any major franchise out there. Assassin's Creed has had its peaks, it's had its valleys. The same thing can be said with many games out there, guys. Fallout to you know, Elder Scrolls to, I mean, there are so many different titles out there that you could say had good games and then very poor games. And there's a little bit of, uh, of some stuff in between. I don't think it's necessary for there to be an Advanced Warfare 2. But the question is, is will there be an Advanced Warfare 2? Uh, to me, guys, I, I really can't see it. Um, I, the reason why I can't see it is because obviously the developers who developed Advanced Warfare is Sledgehammer Games. They have now merged currently with Treyarch to work on, they worked on the campaign for Black Ops Cold War. Then you had Treyarch focusing mainly on the multiplayer and then them as well as Raven focusing on the zombies portion. And then of course we've got Infinity Ward working on the next COD most likely. So where does that leave Sledgehammer? Well, Sledgehammer, I, I just don't, I, I feel like at this point, it's kind of feeling to me that Treyarch, or I really should say, you know, uh, Activision as a whole has put Treyarch and Infinity Ward as the two main studios that are uh, developers that are creating, say, Modern Warfare and Black Ops, respectively. And they're just going to continue moving forward. And Sledgehammer is just going to move from one develop, like working with one developer to the other, working on like the campaign or in any way they can. So would they bring Advanced Warfare 2 out? I mean, sure, it did pretty well. It sold well, but I don't think it sold as well as Modern Warfare and Black Ops, you know, obviously, because those are the two biggest subseries for Call of Duty. So I just don't see Activision doing that. Now, if people call for change once again, I would assume Activision would actually go in a totally new direction. Now, we'll talk later about Call of Duty Ghost 2, but. I think that, you know, Advanced Warfare, it, sure, anything can happen. You can never say never, but I, I feel like if they were going to try something, you know, if they were going to go in that direction again, where it was like super futuristic, I feel like they would have, you know, they would green light a totally new IP uh, or a to totally new sub-series, not f continue Advanced Warfare, because they did get a lot of backlash. They, uh, of course, from Black Ops 3 and Infinite Warfare especially, uh, got a huge amount of backlash. So I think that, you know, those are certainly things that would keep them from making an Advanced Warfare 2. So to me, guys, I don't believe it. I, I don't really see it happening. Uh, Golden, obviously, uh, you know, you've been around the Call of Duty scene for a long time. And, uh, you know, after seeing what transpired from Call of Duty Ghosts, to Advanced Warfare, to Black Ops 3, to Infinite Warfare. Then we got World War II, which I believe was a step in the right direction. Black Ops 4, I felt like felt we were really getting back to a good spot, even though we didn't have a campaign. And then Modern Warfare, it really felt like, okay, we're back. And now Black Ops Cold War, it's feeling like all these are boats on the ground. I think we're back on track. How do you see it? Do you think that we should get a Call of Duty Advanced Warfare 2? see it happening but i do think that to some level it should happen but i don't think it should go in the future of where advanced warfare had left off i think it should actually go back in the past they could keep it boots on the ground by saying hey it was placed x amount of years before the exosuit was created x amount of years before jetpacks like all that so it could actually be very interesting and you could what like play boots on the ground 
and have an amazing time with friends. I personally enjoyed Advanced Warfare's campaign, um, albeit it was a little bad at points, but what campaign isn't, honestly? Um, but I'm obviously a huge zombies guy. I did not like in, uh, Advanced Warfare Zombies. First off, it was locked behind a paywall, which is something that I don't assume they would do again. But also, it is recognized as potentially the worst of zombies ever created uh, from Activision and COD as a whole. And uh, the multiplayer didn't really feel it, but it was enjoyable to play with friends. So I don't see it ever happening. But I'm not going to completely say that's off the table, especially if they go to Boots on the Ground, which seems like a lot of people are enjoying right now. And I am one of those people. Yeah. I mean, uh, to me, I, I I can't really see them going Boots on the Ground with Advanced Warfare. I mean, I guess, you, like I said, you can never say never. The reason why I don't see it is why would they go Boots on the Ground with Advanced Warfare when they can just stay Boots on the Ground with Modern Warfare or stay Boots on the Ground with Black Ops, which are much bigger franchises? I feel like, uh, or sub-series, I feel that if you're going to do Advanced Warfare 2, you're going to continue that jetpack sort of feel. Now, maybe you kind of lay off a little bit where you have game modes that are Boots on the Ground and then you have game modes that are w with the jetpacks. Uh, you know, which could be relatively interesting. I'm with you when it comes to the campaign. I thought campaign was pretty cool. And to be honest with you, I actually enjoyed Advanced War Warfare for what it was. I, my gripe and my uh, issue with Activision on this was what came after Advanced Warfare. I was totally on board with Advanced Warfare. I thought, man, okay, we're going to get a jetpack game. I mean, this will be different. This is cool. We'll try it out. And we did. And I played it for, I would probably say near that entire year that it was out. But then once we heard that the next game, Black Ops 3, was also jetpacks, that's where it started to lose me. And then I went back to some, because a lot of times what would happen was with the jetpack era, we had a lot of people that went back to the older CODs. So a lot of us playing advanced warfare, once we heard about black ops three, we either continue playing advanced warfare or we stopped and moved on or moved backwards to black ops two, to, uh, you know, to modern warfare two, to some of the older CODs. And so, you know, and then that happened once again with Black Ops 3. We would play it a little bit, like maybe a month or two, and then go back to the older CODs. Play Infinite Warfare for a few weeks, <laughs> and then move back to the older CODs. So, I, you know, to me, Advanced Warfare was a great, it was a great idea because the community wanted change, and we got change, but the problem was, was how extreme that change was. So, uh, from, you know, Advanced Warfare, like I said, if Black Ops 3 was boots on the ground, I think that would have been a really great, uh, you know, experience overall. Uh, and then Infinite Warfare, if that were boots on the ground, I don't know how good that would have been. I mean, maybe, I mean, I think it would have certainly been better, but I just felt that Call of Duty took this approach that we are going to take things from Titanfall, take things from other games that, um, you know, are popular amongst those communities and try to put it into our game when they really lost the identity of what Call of Duty is all about, where you're not playing, you know, you're not fighting on, you know, skate parks and aquariums. Instead, you're fighting on battlefields and such. And, and that's where they started to just lose me with, with some of those changes that they made between, you know, Advanced Warfare to Black Ops 3. And then, of course, where it really hit that peak of people being absolutely uh, ticked off in a major way with Infinite Warfare. But, you know, uh, I, you know, it's, it's hard to say. It's very hard to say. Will there be one? I don't think so, guys. But you can never say never. You can never say never. You never know what Activision's got kind of cooking behind the scenes. Question is, though, guys, is what do you all think? Do you think there will be an Advanced Warfare 2? Let me know in the comment section down below. And for more Advanced Warfare 2 content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. On the YouTube channel, we have talked a lot, guys, in the past about Call of Duty Ghosts 2 and just really ghosts in general and, and you know, what really happened with within the sub-series, you know, of the overarching franchise of Call of Duty. What happened there? Why didn't we ever get a continuation? And will we get one in the future? That's what we're going to be talking about in this segment of the show. So let's get into it. So 
Guys, we have talked uh, multiple times about Call of Duty Ghosts, the past, the present, where we stand right now, and the future of Call of Duty Ghosts, and uh, could we ever see a continuation? I have called for a Call of Duty Ghost 2 uh, to happen. Um, I've wanted it to happen, uh, not so much because I loved the game overall, but uh, there were a few things that made me feel like this is the direction that Infinity Ward is going to go in because at the end of Call of Duty Ghost campaign, uh, talk about the biggest cliffhanger I have ever seen in a Call of Duty uh, title to date. And we never got closure there. So that right there made me feel that Infinity Ward absolutely uh, planned on continuing Call of Duty Ghosts. Now, whether that the, the plug was pulled from Activision or if, you know, something else happened like creative differences or they just felt that, uh, you know, Modern Warfare is what everyone wants to, to, to play, it's very hard to say. But I have wanted a Call of Duty Ghost 2 to happen, not only from the perspective of the campaign, but the multiplayer can be refined. I believe that the multiplayer was not that good. Like, I, you know, I'll be the first to admit that I thought that the multiplayer was very bad. And it was one of the reasons why everyone was calling for change. And like I said earlier in the show, we got change in the form of Advanced Warfare. Um, but so, so will we see, a, you know, or will there be a Call of Duty Ghost 2? I think that this has better... Uh, you know, this has a, a better chance, in my opinion, than Advanced Warfare 2. Um, even though it's unlikely that they'll do Ghost 2 because of how successful Modern Warfare is, I think that people, at some point, will want change once again. People are going to want there to be change. Whether we're talking, you know, they, wanna, they want, you know, Treyarch to get away from Black Ops, or they want Infinity Ward to get away from Modern Warfare. I think that there's a chance here. Ghost was the best-selling game of that year, which it is every year with Call of Duty. Call of Duty is the best-selling game every year. But what I'm getting at is that Call of Duty Ghost didn't like cost, you know, Activision money. It didn't. It didn't essentially, even though obviously they had to pay for it, the initial investment, but they made money from it at the end of the day. They didn't lose money from Call of Duty Ghost. Extinction, in my opinion, was 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 awesome. I would love to see a continuation, an elaboration of Extinction. And uh, the multiplayer would be the main thing that Infinity Ward would need to refine and, and really get right, uh, I think, for people to really enjoy it. But do I think it could happen? I, I believe that Ghost 2 could certainly happen. Will it, though? I... <sighs> I just have a hard time believing that Activision is going to want to go back to, you know, Ghosts or to any of these other, uh, you know, sub-series in Call of Duty outside of Modern Warfare and Black Ops because it's working. Why try to fix something that's not broken? Um, so I feel that Activision probably just wants to continue milking the cash cow of, you know, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, and Call of Duty Black Ops. Those are my thoughts, guys, uh, but I am absolutely um, behind Call of Duty Ghosts 2. And I, I'll say this, and I've said this multiple times, guys, we talk a lot about the future of many different games on the YouTube channel, and the most powerful tool out there is us, as the community, voicing our opinion. Whether it's tweeting at the developers uh, on Twitter, whether it's voicing our opinion on, on YouTube, or um, whatever it is, guys, those are the ways that we can echo these games into existence. If enough people want a Call of Duty Ghost 2, and just from looking at YouTube videos and looking at community forums, there's a lot of people who want a Call of Duty Ghost 2. Uh, so to me, guys, I believe if we voice our opinions, it, you know, it can actually really move mountains um, when it comes to these developers. They very well may see there's enough people that want this. Let's get it made. Obviously, it's going to have to go through Activision, so it's going to take all of us. If you want a Call of Duty Ghost 2, you're going to have to voice your opinion. Uh, if you want another Modern Warfare title, you want another Black Ops title, you have to voice your opinion. Um, those are things, guys, that we as a community have to do. So, Golden, obviously, uh, as I stated earlier, earlier, you've been in the Call of Duty community for a you know for a long time. Call of Duty goes to where, uh, you know, do you think that this is a title that could maybe happen? And, you know, 
Uh, what did you think of the first Call of Duty Ghosts overall? Okay, so to knock out your first question, I personally do not see this happening. I see it as personally near zero chance. I do want to see some modes come back, mainly Extinction. That was a very, very solid. Um, but the reason I don't see it ever coming back is because, and I just re-looked this up, uh, according to the fan score, the user score on Metacritic, COD Ghost was received worse than Infinite Warfare, which obviously Infinite Warfare is known as potentially the worst COD of all time. So, at least at the time of when COD Ghost had released, and weeks after when people were reviewing it a bunch, the general fan consensus was, we do not want to see this return. And personally, I didn't have much of an issue with it. Obviously, I found the multiplayer a little bit lackluster. Uh, Extinction. It was a, a okay mode. I think that they could make it a lot better. I did like some concepts from it, mainly the fact that like instead of there being like off the wall weapons, there were guns that were able to be found on the ground, which I found very interesting. Instead of just having to open up the entire map to like get better and better weapons, you could just uh, every once in a while potentially get lucky or. You, it would just be good old fun with friends, and I do enjoy that for obvious reasons. I'm a massive uh, zombies fan, so anything related at all to zombies, I normally enjoy. Um, like I said, multiplayer could be improved, and I do think that the power of like the PS5, Series X, and current PCs could make the game a lot better, both aesthetically, like to the eye. And uh, they could put potentially more into the campaign and make it just look better and make it uh, more enjoyable for the fans. Um, but I personally just don't see it happening, uh, mainly because it was such a big financial risk for Activision and Infinity Ward that I didn't think paid off all that well for them. So I don't know. But to an extent, I can see it happening for this reason and this reason only. It is clear that Activision is sl slowly moving away from, uh, what's it called? From uh, being concerned about this uh, COD was by far like the, the highest selling COD of this uh, year or the past few years. They've slowly moved away from that mainly because, in my mind, their financial side is we aren't going to make people pay for DLCs. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do that, which was a massive thing. And now they're not doing that. So I think they're slowly moving away from the financial side and being like, let's just uh, give fans what they want or potentially would like to see. So, yeah, yeah, that's kind of where I think we stand right now. Right. Well, I, you know, and I, I do agree with you on, the, you know, as far as it did not get a good reception. And I've always talked about this on the YouTube channel that the two things that can either continue a franchise or kill a franchise, number one is the sales, because at the end of the day, it's the bottom line. How much money is the game making? But number two is the reception. Is it positive? Is it negative? And one of those two things, or both of those things, uh, can really dictate whether you're going to see a continuation of a franchise moving forward, or if it's going to go into a limbo state, or a state of no return. So, uh, you know, honestly, guys, uh, I, I would like to see Ghost 2 come out. But once again, it's another title in the Call of Duty franchise that I just don't really see it coming back because of the success of Modern Warfare and Black Ops and, you know, why fix something that isn't broken. But I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you all think? Do you think we'll ever get a Call of Duty Ghost 2? Let me know in the comment section down below. And for more Call of Duty Ghost 2 content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. Alrighty, guys. Well, that is going to do it for this episode of the show. I want to say thank you to all of you for, for checking it out. Uh, really quick though, definitely check out Golden Guys in the description down below. You guys can see all of his links. Golden, what is the best way for people to find you? Uh, mainly on YouTube as I normally link my Twitch and all my socials on uh, either my about page or on my uh, videos in the description. So go check me out. It would be very awesome to grow the community a little bit. Share some love, and uh, yeah, it's very fun to just engage with the community around COD. So yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, 
I want to say thank you to Golan for coming on to the show, guys. Um, it is, uh, it's, it's been awesome. This is, uh, this has been a great episode of the show. And uh, with that, guys, like I said, go check out Golden in the description down below. You'll see his links, guys. And I'm sure this won't uh, be the last time that he's on the channel. Make sure, though, guys, let me know what you all thought of the show, guys, in the comment section down below. And if you guys did enjoy this episode of the Eight Below Show. Make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, stay positive, and as always, I'll talk to you guys all in the next one. Peace.